users. It's my, it's my first time here at IMPA. It's, it's really wonderful, so a big thank you. And uh, what I'll talk about is about this Rabinovitz fluoromology. Rabinovitz fluoromology. So this is an algebraic invariant which was introduced quite recently by Kaitzilibak and Urs Fraunfelder. Say 2007. So it's an algebraic invariant which one attaches to uh, Newville domains and which has very nice dynamical uh, well, which is very useful in, uh, in dynamics and uh, so Newville domains so let me say a couple of words about these so a Newville domain is just a, a 2n dimensional manifold manifold say compact And uh, with boundary, boundary, <coughs> and it's endowed with a one form, the Liouville form. So there is lambda one form on W, and it has the property that its differential, let's call it omega, it's a symplectic form. So W is an exact symplectic manifold. And uh, that when I restrict lambda to the boundary of W, I get a contact form. So let's say alpha is lambda restricted to the boundary of W. This is a contact form. So contact just means that uh, so alpha wedge the alpha to the n minus 1 is a, is a volume form, it's a positive volume form. Okay, and so whenever, so on the boundary we have this contact form and whenever we have a contact form we also have a, a dynamical system, we have a, a flow, we have a rib vector flow. So the rib vector field I will denote it by R. So R is a vector field on the boundary of W and it's defined by, so it's spanning the kernel of the alpha. So the alpha is uh, the restriction of a symplectic form, but a not dimensional manifold. It's as non degenerate as it can be. So it has a one dimensional kernel. So the kernel is spanned by R. And then R is normalized in such a way that alpha R is one. OK, so this is the rib vector field. OK, this is a Liouville domain. and. Uh, examples. I'll be mainly concerned with uh, one example. This example is um, unit cotangent disbundles. So we have uh, mg a closed Riemannian manifold. And we consider its unit cotangent disbundle, which is just so D star M. This is the set of uh, uh, co-vectors, so Q, P in T star M, with the property that G, P, P, well actually G star, so this is the dual metric on, on the cotangent bundle, is less or equal than one. So this is a Liouville domain where, with respect to the so standard Liouville form, just PDQ, the standard Liouville form on cotangent bundles. And uh, its boundary is, of course, it's the unit sphere bundle. It's S star M. And the flow of the rib vector field here is just the geodesic flow. So the flow of R is the geodesic flow. So this was example one. 
Example two is basically a, a generalization of this example. Uh, so we consider more general domains instead, in, inside a, a cotangent bundle. So W is contained in T star M, and it has the property of being, so it's fiber-wise, fiber-wise, uniformly convex. And, and then we require that inside W, we want to have a Lagrangian graph. So there is a Lagrangian graph in the interior part of W, or equivalently, there exists a closed one form, closed one form theta on M, whose, actually, whose image, seen, theta can be seen as a section of T star M, and we want that the image of uh, so the image of theta is contained in the interior part of uh, of W, and this is a set of uh, important sets in uh, say in Hamiltonian dynamics because this is precisely what you get when you have a, say you start from a Tonelli Lagrangian so you start from, so you have a second order dynamical system with configuration space M, then you you, but then you have the differential transform, you have the Hamiltonian, and then you look at sublevels of this Hamiltonian, so the set of points in phase space whose energy is less or equal than a certain constant. And then by the, say, the Hamiltonian characterization of uh, uh, Manier critical values, it turns out that this condition of uh, containing a Lagrangian graph is precisely equivalent of saying that the energy is above the strict Manier critical value. I, I, I really mean that the, uh, so it's the sublevel of a functional whose fiber-wise derivative at every point is, uh, has a positive action. So of course here everything is compact, so then you form it. And sorry, this is a compact subset of Okay, and th this is also a, a Liouville domain. Here, the Liouville form is PDQ minus pi star of theta. So you pull back theta, so pi is just a projection. Pi is the projection from T star M down to M. And you pull it back to the whole uh, cotangent bundle, and this is the Liouville form. And of course, the, the rib flow then is just the Hamiltonian flow you know, up, to some, uh, up to time reparatorization is the Hamiltonian flow on the boundary of W. OK, then Rabinovitz's uh, fluoromology. So as I said, Rabinovitz's fluoromology is an environment which is associated to a general Uville domain, so just this hypothesis. But to make this thing simpler, also for the sake of this talk, I will just restrict to domains which are already subdomains of the cotangent disk bundle. And so now we have W, it's inside the cotangent bundle, T star M. And there is some Liouville form lambda. So what one does is uh, uh, well, we fix a Hamiltonian, H is a smooth function on T star M, with the property that the sublevel zero is precisely W. And then we also normalize it in such a way, so whenever we have a Hamiltonian, we also have a Hamiltonian vector field, xh, because we have a symplectic form. And we require that the restriction of xh to the boundary of w agrees is precisely the rib vector field. In general, this would be just a multiple of the vector field, and we require that the, the conformal function to be one. Uh, then, so we can consider the classical uh, functional, energy functional, uh, so sorry, the classical action functional for first order uh, Hamiltonian systems. So if we have, let's call it Y, this is a, a closed curve of period eta, so a function from R modulo eta z to T star n. Then its action is just uh, 
the action of y is just the integral of lambda. So the integral sort of say y star lambda over the circle, r over eta z, minus the integral from 0 to eta of h y of tau d tau. This is a standard uh, Hamiltonian action. And you can uh, reparameterize your curve on the interval 0, 1 in the, in the usual way. So x of t is y of eta t. So now x is a curve on the unit, on the unit torus, let's call it t, from t star m. And by this change of variable, this functional becomes the integral on t of x star lambda, because of course, when you integrate one forms, you don't see difference. It does not depend on the parameterization. Then minus eta, the integral of 0, 1, h of x of t in dt. So you get this functional here. And you can interpret this as a function of two variables. So it's an action function. It depends on the loop x. And it depends on the number, the period, eta. So this is a very classical function, of course. But it was used for the first time in, in to prove really existence results, actually to prove, uh, to confirm the Weinstein conjecture for convex uh, domains in, uh, in R2M by Paul Rabinovitz in the late 70s. And so it carries the name of the Rabinovitz action function. And so notice that, so this functional here is, so the, the physical interpretation is that eta should be a positive number, it's the period. But actually, when you look at the functional, uh, this function is well defined also when eta vanishes and when eta becomes negative. So we'll like to see eta, so, sorry, a as a functional from, say, loop space on t star m cross r into the reals. So by lambda, I always define denote the loop space of some n. So loops of period one. So these are loops of period one cross r into r. So there is a difference with respect to the, so the, the Lagrangian uh, free period action function would, would have instead the form s of x eta equals eta integral of t of l uh, gamma gamma dot over eta, this function here. So this would be, because of this term here, this would be a function of which does not extend for eta equal, uh, eta equal 0. Instead, in the, in the first order formulation, it does. And Rabinovitz fluoromology is uh, fluoromology. So it's a way of doing more theory for this function here. So let's see how. So first of all, what are the critical points of this functional? So this can be based. So a pair x eta is a critical point of A, if and only if. So when you differentiate with respect to the loop variable, what you get is precisely the, uh, the, the Hamiltonian equation, x dot equal eta x h x. <coughs> Just because there is an eta in front of the Hamiltonian. So solutions are actually solutions of the Hamiltonian equation reparameterized by this number eta. And when you take the derivative with respect to eta, well, everything is linear with respect to eta. So you would get that the integral of h vanishes. But actually, the h is constant on, uh, on uh, solutions of this equation. So if the integral vanishes, it means that h has to vanish. So h of x t constantly equal to 0. So you get this. And then you can distinguish two, there are basically two cases. If eta is different, so the second condition is the same as saying that x of t belongs to, our, to the boundary of our UVL domain, because that was the zero set for, 
our Hamiltonian. Remember, our Hamiltonian was zero on the boundary, negative inside, and positive outside. So if eta is different from zero, then you can do the, uh, the time uh, change of variable backwards. And what you get is that y, the find of that uh, equation there, is an eta periodic solution. So orbit of, uh, orbit of the rib vector field R on bundle of W. And notice that eta could also be negative. So these critical points are reparameterization of rib orbits, but uh, either with positive velocity or negative velocity. You can also run it backwards. And the other thing is that if eta equals 0, then x is, uh, so x dot equals 0, so x is a constant, but actually it can be any constant. So any constant on, a on the boundary of w is a critical point. So eta of 0, so x is uh, a constant, constant belonging to the boundary of w. So these are the critical points. And the other important thing is that the value of the action on critical points is precisely eta. <coughs> One line computation, you show that the action on critical, so this for every x eta on critical points. OK, so here is a picture of the, of the geometry of this uh, Rabinovitz action functional. So here is the value of a. So for value 0, when a is, is 0, you have all the constants which are on the boundary of eta. So here you have a, a, big, a big manifold of a big 20 minus dim one dimensional manifold of critical points, which is precisely the boundary. This is the boundary of w. And then instead, you have genuine, uh, genuine periodic orbits. And these genuine periodic orbits, if, of course, uh, everything is translation invariant. If x is a critical point, also its time translation will be a, still an orbit. Everything here is autonomous. So they come out, so in, the, in this space of loops, actually loops cross r, they come out in circles. So there are circles here. So this is a circle of all critical points. And if there is one here for some value of a, then you can also say here you run in some direction. There is its twin down here when you reparameterize everything with the opposite velocity. So the picture is like this. You have all this symmetry. OK, so this is the, uh, so so in general, so, uh, you, then you would like to do a more theory for such a function. So, uh, so th this function, of course, cannot be expected to be a Morse function. So its critical points are never isolated. However, here one can do uh, what is called uh, uh, Morse theory with, uh, with cascades, which was introduced by, by Urs, by Fraunfelder. And uh, so, what one needs is you, one fixes an auxiliary Morse function, let's call it A. This is a Morse function on the set of critical points of BK. So it's a Morse function defined here, 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 here. Uh, let's assume, so it would be nice to assume that we are in a Morse bot situation, but let's assume that the orbits are non degenerate. So at least these are just circles and there's nothing else. So this is a standing assumption. Orbits are non-degenerate, and this is a generic assumption on, uh, on W. If you, give a, if you perturb W, you can always achieve this. So you fix a Morse function here. And then one would like, so, uh, the, so this homology will be the homology of a chain complex. The generators of the chain complex will be critical points of A. So there will be particular critical point of, uh, of big A. And uh, so if x eta is a critical point actually also of big A, 
then it carries, it has an index, so it, it, it has a, a cert, uh, sort of Morse index, let's call it mu, mu of x theta. Uh, sorry, let's say, let's consider a critical point of small a, point we're interested in. So this index is the conlate sender index of x. So here we are on a cotangent bundle. When we, are on a cotang we have a Hamiltonian system on a cotangent bundle, there is this uh, invariant which is always well defined, and it's the conlate sender index which tells you uh, how many times the, uh, the flow, the linearized flow, uh, turns into the symplectic group, basically. And then you correct it by the Morse index of this x eta as a critical point of a small a. So all these points here would have this same uh, conlate sender index, and you correct it by the Morse index as a critical point of the function small a. Okay, so this is, is an integral in general. Uh, then, then you define the uh, so RFK. This is, will be a Z two uh, vector space, and it's generated by formal sums of critical points. So these are, so we now work with the Z2 coefficients. So this would be a Z2 vector space. So formal, for, formal sums of critical points, so this means so sum of uh, say Z, Z belongs to some set uh, script Z, and script Z is a subset of the set of critical points of A. So these sums, uh, so all, all these uh, uh, critical points should have this, uh, rather this generalized index equal to k. So k here is an integral. So mu restricted to z equal k. And these, uh, these critical points may be infinite, but they, if they are infinite, so of course in a, in a given strip, there's only a finite, well of course, one can prove it. There's only a finite number of such critical points of small a. And these sums might be infinite, but they're infinite only because I can consider uh, critical points where the value of the action goes to negative infinity, not to positive infinity. So in other words, we want that the supremum of a on this script z to be finite. Okay, so this is our vector space, and then one would like to define a boundary operator from Rfk to Rfk minus one. <coughs> and this is done so in the usual way in fluoromology, but with this cascades trick. So uh, say the critical points are, you know, one is here, one is here, one is here, one is here. Here, 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 there is a bunch of critical points. Okay. So these are the generators of my, of my space RFK. And I fix two of them, for instance, this one. <coughs> and I don't know, this one. And one wants to define the coefficient. So when I take the boundary of this, I want to define what's what's the coefficient of this second guy in the boundary of this. And this is done by counting the sp space of solutions. So along on the, <coughs> on the critical set, one goes down following minus the gradient of small a. So this gradient of this finite dimensional Morse function. And here, so at a certain point, one can leave the uh, the critical set, and one goes down with, with minus gradient of the big action function, and then uh, go back, something like this, and know, I go here, and then I go here, and then I go here, here, and finally end up here, for instance. So these are called flow lines with cascades. These are the cascades, and one counts the number of all cascades between two critical points, and one finds out that when the index difference is precisely one, this, there is a discrete set of such uh, things, and so one can 
associate a number, one counts them modulo, modulo two, and one defines this operator. So this becomes a chain complex. So it's a chain complex of vector space, and it's, uh, its homology, so H of RF, is the Rabinovitz Fleur homology homology of W. Okay, so this Rabinowitz Fleur homology uh, has already found, it's, it's quite recent, but it has already found a large number of applications. I don't have time to mention any of them here, but I'll take the opportunity of the fact that actually uh, Urs will talk about this, and I think also Gabriel will, uh, so they will talk also about these applications of Rabinovitz fluoromology. So for now, let's just, and so I just, so I just want to mention some of the names of people who are working on this. So I've already mentioned Silibach and Fraunfelder, then there is also Oancia. Uh, Peter Albers, Gabriel Paternine, and very recently Will Mary. <coughs> and so more to come in the next talks about applications of Rabinovitz fluoromology. Uh, in this talk, I want to talk about uh, a particular problem, which is the problem of computing the Rabinovitz fluoromology of uh, cotangent disk bundle. So it's, the question is, what is the Rabinovitz fluoromology of, in the particular case of Distorem? So as always, uh, defining these uh, fluoromologies is something always quite easy when one knows the machinery, and then the problem is how to compute them in particular examples, because then once you know this, then you can use it to prove uh, theorems and, and so on. And the, the answer to this question is known, and it's, co it's contained in a recent paper by Zillibach, Fraunfelder, and Oancia, 2009. And the way they computed this uh, Rabinowitz fluoromology, they showed the existence of an exact sequence. Now I'll write down this exact sequence. So Rabinowitz fluoromology of this theorem. Uh, sorry, let's start with a little more space on this side. So singular homology of the loop space, lambda m, goes into Rabinowitz fluoromology, same index of this theorem, <coughs> and this goes into cohomology of the loop space, but of index one minus star, and then you go on. So here there will be say, H uh, star minus one of lambda M and so on. So actually, in, in their proof, so they, they show the existence of such an exact sequence in a more, much more general situation. This is no, it's not here anymore. In the situation of a general Liouville domain, where one has Rabinowitz fluoromology in the middle, and symplectic homology and symplectic cohomology uh, here. And, but if one reads this for the cotangent disk bundle, then one can use the Viterbo's isomorphism between symplectic homology and uh, singular homology of the loop space, and so one end up with this sequence. And once you have this sequence, from this sequence, you can compute the Rabinowitz fluoromology. Actually, you see, so singular homology and singular cohomology are, are non-zero only for non-negative values of the index. So from this exact sequence, you see immediately, for instance, that HRF K of B star M <laughs> is uh, equals, so the HK singular homology of lambda M when K is greater or equal than one, or H one minus K 
no, sorry, above one minus k of lambda n when k is less or equal than zero. Uh, no, sorry, it's a minus one. And in the middle, zero and one, there is a, a bit of, so homology and cohomology, they mix up a bit. Uh, and there is something else. I will come to back this uh, later. Okay. So, and the aim of this talk is how can we understand this exact sequence from, say, a chain level point of view in the following way. So, if you look at this exact sequence, what you naively expect is that, so, this, this exact sequence here, so here there is something from topology, here also there is something from topology, this should come from a short exact sequence of this form here. Ah, sorry, let me say it immediately. Everything in, from now on, everything is a joint work with uh, Matthias Schwartz. Schwartz. <coughs> so, we'd like to find, so aim, find a short exact sequence of this form here. So zero goes into, I write it down, then explain what it is. So C star of lambda m, this goes into the rabinovitz flair complex of D star m, and this goes into C one minus star of lambda m, and then it goes to zero. Where where this is the chain complex or the chain differential group uh, associated to topology, so to, to, for instance, to some uh, cellular filtration of your loop space, or if you want to some CW decomposition of the loop space. So you would like to find, so this is the chain complex, and this is the <coughs> one in cohomology, so the differential complex associated, so they are associated to some coming from some, uh, say, cellular filtration of lambda. This is the aim. And there is a, there is a natural candidate for this cellular, for building this cellular filtration, which is based on considering, in this case, the uh, energy functional for geodesics. Let's see how. So I recall we're looking at the cotangent disk bundle. So rib orbits are precisely closed geodesics. And so critical points of our Rabinovitz action function are closed geodesics some, I mean, lifted to the cotangent bundle and then parameterized uh, either in the correct way or in the wrong way. And then, moreover, we have all this space of constants. But on the other side, we also have uh, so for closed geodesic, we have a, a standard functional, so the energy functions from lambda m into r, which is just the energy of a curve. E of gamma equals uh, integral zero one of uh, g gamma dot gamma dot in dt. And this is a very nice function from calculus of variation. You can consider, for instance, this function on the space of loops of Sobolev class W12 with values in M. So this is a very nice Hilbert manifold. This is the best function you may dream of. And you have a Morse theory for this function. Again, critical points of this function are not non-degenerate. They come in families. And so you have to do a Morse bot theory precisely in the sense stated before, for instance, using these cascades. So you have to consider also an auxiliary function, which I will call small e. This is a Morse function on the space of critical points of the energy, Morse. 
And then if you look at the, so if you look at the negative gradient flow with the recipe stated before, what you produce is, uh, is a complex. It's called the Morse complex. So one produces, so if you look at minus gradient of E, one produces M, M star of E. So this is a chain complex. It's a, the Morse chain <coughs> complex. And this chain complex is nothing else than the chain complex associated to a cellular filtration of, uh, of your, uh, in this case, <coughs> this space here, obtained by just thickening a bit the unstable manifolds of critical points with respect to this flow. And so in particular, the homology of this complex here is isomorphic to the singular homology of lambda n. And if you go backwards, if instead of following minus gradient of E, you follow plus gradient of E, what you get is, uh, uh, let's call it M with upper star E. So this is the Morse differential complex. The, now there is a co-boundary, not a boundary. And the cohomology of this uh, Morse differential complex is, as expected, the cohomology of the loop space, singular cohomology of the loop space. So, okay, so one has natural candidates for what to put here and what to put here. One puts here the Morse chain complex of the energy functional, and here the Morse differential complex of the energy functional. So far, so good. Then, uh, the other thing we can do is we can, so, Critical points are, are related to these two functional. We said uh, critical points of the Rabinovitz action functional are precisely closed geodesics, possibly uh, lifted on the cotangent bundle with the opposite, opposite orientation, plus constants. And so the natural thing is to say that these two auxiliary Morse functions that we have in, uh, to deal with the Morse bot situation satisfy the following things here. So A, so the, the function E, the Morse function E is the same as A, uh, sorry, A is E composed to the projection pi on critical points, say x, eta, belonging to critical points of big A with eta different from zero. Okay, so th there is a one-to-one, -one, I mean, uh, actually a one-to-two uh, one correspondence between critical points, so non-trivial critical points. So the think of non-trivial non geodesics and uh, from the two uh, points of view. And so we can just say that A and E coincide on this thing. This is the projection down on M. And, uh, and then we have to decide something about the constants, how to, to deal with the constants. The, the, the constants inside are different because from the, uh, with the, respect to the Rabinovitz action functional, the constants, so eta equals zero, if you consider the functional A, the constants are S star M, the unit sphere bundle on M. Instead, if I consider the energy function E, then the constants are just M. So there are two different manifolds. One, once I have S star M, and the other time I have M. Uh, what can I do? The easiest thing is to do the following. We choose E and A in a very compatible way, in this sense here, that we choose E to be A. So E is a Morse function Morse function on M, which is self-indexing. Self-indexing means that the value of the functional coincides uh, at a critical point coincides with the value with the Morse index, which is a useful property. Self-indexing, and then uh, with uh, one, just one maximum, let's call it Q max, and one minimum. 
let us call it q min. Okay, so this is E. And then A is some function which has the property that A is between E and so sorry, E composed with the projection, E composed by pi and E composed by pi plus say one half. And then we want the critical points of A to sit on the fibers of critical points of E. And so the fibers are sphere. So we can arrange the situation in such a way that uh, above each critical point of E, we have exactly two critical points of A, a sphere, so a maximum and a minimum. So for each, so for each Q critical point, of E, we have two critical points. Let's call it ZQ plus and ZQ minus. These are critical points of A. And so one of them is, as I said, it's, it's a maximum restricted to the corresponding sphere, and the other it's a minimum restricted to the corresponding sphere. So you can easily guess what. what. And then with the we want this to have more sin, so this will have the same Morse index as Q, and this will have the same Morse index plus n minus one. Okay, and once you have made this choice, choices, it's this is a, a simple exercise in, in, in Morse homology, is that it's it's very easy to compute the Morse complex of E with the Morse complex of A, and precisely. So the boundary of Z Q plus is uh, so this is a critical so this is a boundary with respect to, to the function A. Here we are on the on S star M. And this boundary here is just Z boundary of Q plus. So you, you, you find the, the, the boundary uh, above from the boundary below, with one exception, now I will say. And Z boundary of ZQ minus is Z minus boundary of Q. So this is true. So the, the second thing, uh, the first thing, this is always true for every Q. And in the second thing, this is true for every Q which is different from Q max. And actually the boundary of Z Q max minus is the Euler characteristic of the Euler number, to be precise, the Euler number of T star M times Z Q min plus. So the fact that this is need not to be a trivial bundle comes out in this last, in this last thing. Okay, so let's keep this in, in mind. So we have this. So now that we made this thing, uh, now it's 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 really now it's it's true that the critical points of. Uh, uh, the Rabinovitz action functional A are exactly the double, the one we're interested in, the one which generate the complex, are exactly the double of the critical points of the energy functional E. As for on uh, non-closed, uh, oh, sorry, on non-constant geodesic, just because we can take a positive eta or a negative eta. And here, considering the constants, because every critical point produces a Z cube plus and a Z cube minus, two of them. And of course, there will be naive maps just by identifying generators. But the problem is that if I consider these naive maps just identifying generators, this will not be chain maps, just because the two boundary operators are, this is built by using the, uh, the L2 gradient flow for the uh, Rabinovitz action function. This is by using this other gradient flow. There's no reason why these two, the two boundary operators have, should have anything in common, so we cannot use natural identification. So if we want to build these maps, we have to use some, uh, somehow the flow, the gradient flow here and here. And the idea 
for building these maps. This is the same idea that Matthias and I used also to, uh, to compute the fluoromology of the cotangent bundles. And it's to, to couple fluoromology with morsomology in the following way. Yes. No, no, nothing. It's just a, a thing using the self-indexing property. You, you actually don't need anything about the two. The two you fix. I mean, you have these properties on the functionals. Then you choose any two metrics, and it will hold. No, it's, it's really very easy. Okay, so say that we want to build the first map. So a map, a chain map phi from the Morse complex, M star E, to the Rabinovitz flare complex, R F star of D star. This is what we would like to do. So we start from a generator here. A generator here will be a closed geodesic, so a critical point of the small auxiliary function here. And then we have another generator here, a critical point of the auxiliary function here. And we want to define the coefficient of z in the in phi of omega. So we want to define the number phi omega phi gamma z. I want to define this number here. And uh, the idea is the following. So we, here is gamma. Then we can consider a gradient flow line with respect to the energy functional here. <coughs> Coming out from gamma and stopping somewhere in some, I don't know, gamma naught. So here I follow minus gradient of E. So this is the W12 gradient flow of the energy. So this means that gamma naught is nothing else but some unarbitrarily element of the unstable manifold of gamma. So this is an element of the unstable manifold of gamma with respect to the flow minus gradient of E. Well, actually, it's a bit more complicated because there are these cascades. Let's forget about these for cascades for a moment. So we have this gamma naught. And on the other side, here we have z. So remember, z is a pair. There is an x and there is eta. There is a loop and there is a number, the period. And so there's a number and there is a loop. This is z. And then I can consider half flow lines. So half, the half is here. This is at a this is for the value of the parameter going to positive infinity. This is for s equals 0. And this is a solution. So this is some u, some v, which is a pair. Uh, let's call it u eta tilde, which converges to x eta for s going to positive infinity. It's defined for all s greater or equal than 0. And it solves u dot equal minus gradient of A, V. OK, so on this side, we have one equation. On this uh, the side, we have the, the other equation. And then we have to decide how to couple these equations. And one does it in the, in the obvious way. So one, the coupling, coupling, one requires that when I take u for s equals 0, so u s so u zero t, and I project it onto. So u is a curve on the cotangent bundle. I project it down to m. I get precisely gamma naught of t. And the other coupling condition is that this eta eta tilde at zero. This should be the precise number is the square root of the energy of gamma naught. These are the coupling conditions. And um, so I didn't talk about this equation here, but this is the equation in fluoromology. So this is a, 
uh, if you write down explicitly, it's a PDE, it's a Cauchy Riemann type PDE. And in, in, the, in this coupling condition is basically a parametric family of Lagrangian boundary conditions. Because if I fix my loop gamma naught, then this condition, I want the projection to be down on this, is a t dependent, it's the same as saying that at every t, I'm on the fiber of the projection, which is a Lagrangian submanifold. So it's a one parameter family, so it's a, it's a t dependent uh, uh, Lagrangian boundary condition. And, uh, but then gamma naught varies in the whole unstable manifold, but this whole unstable manifold is finite dimensional. And so this is a, a parametric version of that. And then, because of this, this is actually a Fredholm, prob uh, Fredholm problem, and you can compute the dimension of the solution of this problem, and it's fine, and it's, it really respects the indices. You get dimension zero precisely when here we have the same index. There's only one point, but it probably, well, I just uh, won't write anything about this. There's one point about, uh, so, about co compactness of these solutions. Compactness here comes from this observation here, this inequality, that for every loop, x is a loop in cotangent bundle of m. The Rabinovitz action of x with respect to the uh, period which is precisely the energy of the projection on x down this is less or equal than the square root of this energy. This is true always, and equality holds, equality holds at critical points. And this actually is true, provided that we use the natural Hamiltonian on this side. Here, the action function depends on the choice of the Hamiltonian. And the natural Hamiltonian is really to use the physical one. So h of uh, qp is uh, 1 half p squared minus 1. Because we want that the, on the unit cotangent bundle, we want to have, uh, on the unit sphere, we want to have energy 0. So one has to use these Hamiltonians here, but then if you want to use these Hamiltonians here, there's a difficulty related to the compactness of this problem. And I'll just mention that the, the tool to work with uh, uh, L-infinity estimates for this mixed problem is um, a version of the classical Alexandrov maximum principle, an integral version of the maximum principle. Okay. So now, if we have everything saved, that we have defined this map here, and this will be a chain map just because we are re really using the natural flow here and the natural flow on the other side. And in a similar way, you also construct another map going from uh, Rabinovitz Fleur complex of this star m into m1 minus star of e. you just revert that instead of considering half positive cylinders, you will consider half negative cylinders and, and so on. And what is also true and easy to prove is that this map here, this phi, phi has a left inverse, say phi, let's call it phi hat, and psi has a right inverse psi hat. This fact is just, just follows, it follows again by this inequality here. Because it tells you that if I start, it tells you that these maps phi preserve uh, the filtration given by the action level. If I start from a critical point here and I want to solve this problem, I will be able to find, to solve it only if the if the Rabinovitz, so when, when I do the coupling, because of this, I go, so here the energy is some number, energy of gamma. Then it goes down, energy of gamma naught, but then the action 
will go down because it will go below this square root of the energy and then it continues on going down. And basically because of this you can see that if you order your generators of the rabinovitz flair complex and of the Morse complex by increasing value of the action, these are operators which are represented by triangular matrices, infinite triangular matrices, and so this has a left inverse and this has a right inverse. Okay, this is uh, easy. Uh, and now one suspects that everything is done because now we have a, a sequence zero. So here we have Morse complex, here we have phi, and so here we have exactness because this has, a, in particular, this is, is injective. Here we have Rabinovitz fleur. Here we have psi, and we also have exactness here because psi is surjective. So exactness here and exactness here is fine. The problem is exactness here. And if you study the composition, so actually, so let's say it is a lemma. Exactness here actually may not hold, or at least we don't have any reason to, we don't have a counterexample, so we don't even have reason to, to hope that it holds. What is true is that, is that the composition, psi composed phi, so this might be different from zero, but it's chain homotopic to zero, so it's of the form p boundary plus, so this goes from here to here, so plus co-boundary p, it's something like this, where p is some map where p goes from m star Morse complex to m minus star, I guess. And uh, this might be non-zero, and, and we know exactly when, we know how p is built. p is again, uh, again counts solution of some problem, and the problem is the problem of studying uh, these solutions of the Rabinovitz flare equation, but on finite cylinders, which pr and with the probability that they project down on the boundary on closed geodesics, which are minimal. And there is no reason to believe that this problem has uh, always uh, an even number of solutions, so this could be non-zero. But then one, once you have this, this fact here, then it's easy to correct this, exact sequ this non exact sequence in order to make it exact. What you do is simply instead of theta, you, you, instead of uh, phi, you define a new map uh, phi, uh, theta, which is say phi minus, so you, you, you perturb it within its chain homotopy class. So you do like this, you, uh, which you, uh, map you, which you build by using this p. So you use. Uh, so I go with p and then back with psi hat. So we have psi hat p and then boundary minus psi hat p boundary. So I'm just taking this chain map and I'm remaining the same homotopy class just because and now my chain homotopy is psi hat p, psi hat p. So this is another map. And this time, let's take this as a theorem, theorem. This is is now exact. M star theta RF star and here there is psi and here there is M1 minus star and this is exact and the it's an exact sequence the associated so it's a short exact sequence of chain complex the associated the long exact sequence is precisely the long exact sequence I, I wrote before, and so this allows you to, and then also the connecting homomorphism because of the things I wrote before involving the, the um, Euler, Euler number, one has an explicit de de description of the connecting homomorphism, and so one can compute then, so one gets the same uh, exact sequence and one can compute the Rabinovitz fleur homology completely. And let me just conclude by mentioning some, some, some final remarks. So the first remark is that uh, I explained everything with Z2 coefficients, but actually this thing would work also with the integral coefficients. 
So this is just a technical thing, but uh, so the original long exact sequence proved by uh, by Wurzkai and Alexandru uh, worked only with uh, field coefficients because it, the construction was heavily based on uh, inverse limits, and inverse limits do not commute with homology. Here there are no inverse limits, so everything would work with any any coefficient. And uh, another remark is that everything goes through, instead of using the cotangent disk bundle, you could use also the more general set I described before, a, a convex set which contains a Lagrangian graph. And in this case, instead of relating everything with the geodesic energy functional, one, the bridge is with respect to Morse theory of the free period Lagrangian action functional. The free period Lagrangian action function is a very nice function. It was studied uh, uh, quite extensively by, by Gonzalo Contreras. And by using the Morse complex of this uh, uh, free period Lagrangian action functional, you can do the same thing, basically. Uh, the only difference is that if you work on the component of contractible loops, then the free period Lagrangian action functional has doesn't see the constants. There are no critical points which correspond to constants. But in some sense, they are there as critical points at infinity. So one has to take into account that. And the last remark I would like to mention is that uh, there is a very recent uh, project by, uh, by Will Mary, who uses similar ideas in the much more complicated case of twisted uh, cotangent disk bundle to compute the Rambinovitz fluoromology also in this case. And I uh, thank you for your attention.